As the countdown to the 2022 National Assembly election begins, the political space is also heating up in the Mountain Kingdom. The much-anticipated trial of the former Lesotho Prime Minister Tom Taban is due to resume on Monday. A strange wife, Dupulelo Taban, was assassinated a few days before his inauguration in what is largely a suspected as an attempt to possibly entrench his younger wife's legitimacy to spousal benefits. In other news, Lesotho national reforms may be facing a challenge as the popular Clause 10, which assured former Deputy Prime Minister Motejo Mitzing and his former party member and minister to be immune from any political charge prosecution during the process of the national reforms. And one of the conditions was that the, uh, the charges, criminal charges pending, should not, uh, should not be subjected to them. And that was signed by all the parties, SADAC, Dadim Senek on behalf of SADAC, coalition of uh, parties in parliament, a leader of opposition, in full view of the world, that was signed and agreed to. The duo Metzing and Mochoboran have written to SADAC through the retired justice, Dikham Seneke, to intervene before the set trial of the 6th December failing which they might pull out of the ongoing national reforms. Any international agreement, if you are a member of an organization, as we are a member of SADAC, one is not expecting that a country can sign an international agreement or treaty and eventually come back and say uh, the local laws can supersede that agreement. Whether those developments will have any negative impact on the reforms, or even to the extremely agile and fluid Lesotho political stability, it remains to be seen. Rabelang Khatebe, SABC News, Maserolo Well, for an update, we're now joined by our Lesotho correspondent, Rabelang Khatebe. Rabelang, thanks very much indeed for joining us. It looks like there's a lot of things in the political mix at the moment. Let's start with Tom Tabani. Uh, remind our viewers how he ended up being implicated in the death of his wife. Dr. Peter, a good day to you. you. You are absolutely right. It's quite a full house when it comes to issues in Lesotho. It's always the case we know when we approach the election period. Um, but going back to Dr. Tabane, one you will remember that he was actually called because there was a suspicion that he he was indicted that he was at the scene shortly uh, of the of the, the crime scene if one may say at some point and therefore was linked to that particular uh, murder was linked but there was no charges yet now when they wanted to charge him that is where he challenged uh, and wanted clarity from the court as to whether a sitting prime minister may actually face trial while he's still in office and it raised the question as to whether what happens once he is formally charged that is why even when he went to court he was not in the dock but he was sitting slightly outside but as we say now that case has become, we will call it academic, there is a proper legal term, but we say it is now academic because uh, he is no longer the Prime Minister of Lesotho, he is a retired Prime Minister. Uh, now, that charge has now sprung up again, and he is therefore requested that on the 6th, which is this coming week, no, on the 30th, on the 30th, uh, that he appears in court to face a formal charge. I spoke to his lawyer, even though he was saying he hasn't got new, fresh instructions, but he said that, yes, the papers that have been circulating mostly in media are valid. Uh, he has also consulted, I think, with other colleagues of his, and he said, yes, it is true. On the 30th, the former prime minister, Tom Taban, will appear in court possibly to be charged for either being linked or either being, we will hear what the charges actually will say when he appears on Monday the 30th. What's the situation with his wife? Is she also an accused? Indeed, 
actually the wife was the one to be charged was actually i think spent some time uh in in, in jail uh but then she raised uh a question that due to circumstances that he, her husband is not well, uh, she is the only one who can actually take care of her. That case actually raised a lot of trouble as to whether, because it was said uh, he's literally on the deathbed, uh, but it looks like she was able to find her way. The, the judge released her uh, on account that she goes and take care of the ailment of the farmer. Prime Minister, uh, but some people started raising questions because he said the old man li looked 100% healthy. Um, the, the depth or the magnitude that was explained regarding to uh, what led to the bail of the, the, the wife does not seem to hold water. Uh, he looks fine. He was still conducting meetings. He was still quite active, uh, even though he's quite old. Then it looks like this time, it's almost clear that if he's being charged, the wife might also uh, have to go and face uh, the charges, possibly go back to the docks again, uh, unless they can come up with another legal strategy. All right, so the trial starts on Monday, and I guess there will be huge public attention. Is this going to be televised, you know? Uh, the court has been relatively friendly with media, um, we, we hope, uh, I don't think there will be much of the drama as it resumes because um, it, the, the, the first days are usually just, you know, academic, they prepare papers, prepare this with a possibility that it might actually be, um, be postponed. Uh, but by the look of things, the police had said they had rounded up uh, all the necessary um, what it takes for the trial to actually begin. And if it is by the, remember this case is almost what, five, six years now, because this is what happened in around 2014. Uh, so we would want to assume that the reason they are charging him is because they are now they are ready. But you'll also remember that um, the former commander, General Kadika Moody, he's been in jail for almost four years. In as much there has been other complications, uh, him not wanting the local judges, saying he, he, he thinks they, are, they will not favor him. He wants foreign judges. The foreign judges were brought in. Uh, they challenged the legitimacy of the foreign judges. So it kept going in and out of, of, of court. But as we speak, it's almost four years that they have been sitting in jail and there has not been a proper trial going on. Uh, so we hope that as it comes to court, uh, it's because they have the case ready, uh, the prosecution in order, and the trial will actually resume as predicted on the 30th. In another court case, the Lesotho High Court is wanting to try a former deputy prime minister, um, a former minister, uh, Metzing, and uh, another former uh, party member. Tell us about this case. And, I mean, it seems like a far reach to try and get uh, Dehang Mosaneke to stop, stop a high court process in the Lesotho. Yeah, th this one has been running like a marathon. Um, but I think in essence, what, what we can say is that they signed a pact to remember Metzin was in exile in South Africa. And this is when they legitimately wanted to now kickstart the reform process in Lesotho. And they said, it is better that all politicians, even those who are in exile, uh, they are better off coming into the country. And then there was what was called a clause 10 that said it's a pact that uh, all political parties, all leaders agree not to try them uh, during the duration of the reforms. Sorry. Um, so that, that case was challenged vehemently by other civil societies and said, these people are tried for, for a criminal element. You, you can't say you will suspend a particular criminal case because it might lead to, to a bad example or it might lead to a precedence that others will follow. So it was challenged to the highest court. The understanding was that 
Um, he needs to go and face trial. It's got nothing to do with the national reforms. And they said if, if he's not guilty, he will proceed. And he said he can also elect other members from his party to proceed. Uh, but for him, this is a case of treason, actually, as it was said. And they said it's quite too serious not to be suspended by a clause. But also you are saying the reason Lesotho is in this much trouble, it is because despite its constitution, there has been things that needed uh, to be navigated around the constitution such that if they are looking for peace and eternal peace, um, to some extent they will have to maybe agree to disregard or suspend uh, the certain clauses in constitution just that they can navigate the process of the reforms and remember the reforms were given until at least february in this coming years because lesotho will be going to elections possibly around june or so next year so it's like there's going to be that handle because medzin and mochobor medzin and medzin were saying if they decide to suspend whatever was signed by SADC, uh, it means they will pull out of the reforms process. And the question is whether will they still be considered legitimate? And others were saying a case of two people cannot derail the entire reforms process. So it's a divided society yeah. for those who are following Medzing and Muchovaran. But for others who are saying, no, these are just two individuals they need to follow after all, uh, the likes of Stradika Mudi are already languishing in jail. Why don't they also join them? Because otherwise it says politicians who mostly are the instigators are the ones now who are using their powers to make everything that they do not go to court. The Lesotho political space is highly charged, controversial at times. And I just wonder, all of these court cases, court challenges, will they have an effect on the balance of uh, power in terms of those political forces? What one must say, I think Lesotho may be a very small country, but it has been quite advanced when it comes to issues of, of democracy. Uh, it, it is one of the few that actually went on a coalition. Remember, it started in 2012 when Tabani and this may think had a pact that was able to dethrone the minister Musisidi. Uh, but then that coalition could not hold. Uh, in about two years, Lesotho had gone to another elections, and there were elections like in a, up to how many times? I think two times in a term of five years. In the same space, about two army commanders were assassinated. So it became a very charged some of these um, charges come from. And some of them say they are quite treasonous. Uh, but also you're trying to do a balancing act. If you want to get a, an eternal peace for the Sotho to actually get the, all the political leaders to participate, uh, the question is how do you balance the criminal elements uh, versus trying to build sustainable peace, uh, a transition that can see the reforms bringing a new Lesotho because uh, in a search for power, people do crazy things, you know, and the question is whether do politicians do these things with a hope that they will be immune and they will not face the music when others are already languishing in jail, probably with an influence of some political, political hate figures. Rapalank, that's where we're going to have to leave it. Lesotho, tiny country, but it certainly knows how to generate news. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> it's going to be more by the look of things. <laughs>